This brief tutorial will cover the doctoral study purpose statement, the intent of the DBA doctoral study. In this video, I will discuss the intent of the purpose statement and provide a detailed discussion on the required elements of a well-written purpose statement. These elements are the methodology, the design, the independent and dependent variables for quantitative and mixed method studies only, the population and justification for targeting this population, the geographical location, and the social change implications. Examples of quantitative and qualitative purpose statements will then be examined and a helpful checklist will be provided. Finally, a concise summary will be presented. The purpose statement is a concise depiction of the intent of your study. It is a very important statement in the study and needs to be specifically presented. The purpose statement must map to the rubric. The purpose statement indicates why you want to do the study and what you intend to accomplish. The purpose statement sets the objectives, the intent, or the major idea of a proposal or a study. This idea builds upon a need as identified in the problem statement and is ultimately refined into specific research questions. In essence, the purpose statement is a mini-story that sets the stage for your doctoral study. The DBA rubric indicates the purpose statement should not exceed 250 words. These 250 words should comprise the following six elements. Again, the research method, the research design, the independent and dependent variables, for quantitative and mixed method studies only, the specific population and justification for targeting this population, the geographical location, and the social change statement. If you examine the DBA doctoral study rubric, you will notice how these components align with the components listed in the DBA doctoral study rubric. Also, it is important to note that a qualitative study comprises five of these six elements, whereas a quantitative study comprises all six elements. This will be discussed in further detail. Thus, it is extremely important to verify the mapping to the rubric when preparing the purpose statement. The second element to be presented in the purpose statement is the research design. While there are several designs, the most common seen in DBA qualitative studies are the case study design and the phenomenological design. Note, those using the case study design must obtain data from at least two sources. Data collection is often part of the design and the student needs to succinctly note the data collection in the purpose statement. For example, you might state, 20 first level managers will participate in semi-structured interviews to share their perceptions and experiences. It is important to understand the distinction between the designs, as many components in the project section are based upon the chosen design. Let's examine the phenomenological and the case study designs. The purpose of the case study design is to explore a bounded system or a case or multiple cases over time through detailed, in-depth data collection involving multiple sources of information in rich context. On the other hand, the purpose of a phenomenological design is to describe the meaning of the lived experiences for study participants about a concept or phenomenon. Let's now shift our focus to some basic quantitative designs. Basic quantitative designs include the true experimental design, 
the quasi-experimental design, and the correlation design. Again, it is important to understand the distinction among the designs, as many components in the project section are based upon the chosen design. As mentioned earlier, quantitative purpose statements require the inclusion of the variables. A variable is a measurement of something that holds at least two distinct values across participants or units of analysis within a study. Another definition of a variable is that it is an entity that can take on different values. Variables are considered the basic currency of behavioral research. The list of examples below depicts some possible variables in a study. Notice. The measurement can vary for each participant. For example, one participant might be 15 years old and another participant 32 years old. Or perhaps you are measuring leadership styles. One leader might be assessed as an authoritarian leader and another might be assessed as a participative leader. There are two basic types of variables, independent and dependent. Independent variables are variables that you expect to be related to or have some impact or influence on the dependent variable. The independent variable can be manipulated, such as in a true experimental design, or it is often a fixed value, such as in a quasi-experimental or correlation design. The dependent variable is the variable whose value is dependent upon the level or measurement of the independent variable. The dependent variable is also known as the outcome variable. The model presented depicts a graphical portrayal of the relationship between the independent and dependent variable. In this example, leadership style is shown to be a predictor of or influencing factor of gross revenue, the dependent variable. Notice how the variables are presented in temporal order. That is, the independent variable is presented before the dependent variable. A population is the larger group that you are studying. The population is the fourth element that you must include in your purpose statement. The population is not to be misconstrued as a sample or your study participants. You will select your sample or your study participants from this larger population. For example, your population might be all small businesses in New York. You will, however, select a sub subset of small businesses in New York to serve as your sample or participants. The figure depicts the population on the left and a selected subset or sample on the right. Remember, you are to address the broader population in this component of the purpose statement. For a quantitative study, you will need to calculate the required sample size for generalizability. In a qualitative phenomenological study, the minimum number of participants is 20. For qualitative studies, use transferability to a population. For quantitative studies, use generalizability to a population. You are to also justify why this population is appropriate for your study. Remember, the study must be important to the population. You should identify the importance and explain why it is important. The fifth required element is a statement of the geographical location. The geographical location simply identifies the geographical location of your study's participants. The participants might be in a particular country, state, 
or city. Of course, this may vary based upon the purpose of your study. The final element of your purpose statement requires you to provide a social change statement. Social change involves improvement of human or social conditions by promoting the worth, dignity, and development of individuals, communities, organizations, institutions, cultures, or societies. Focus on explaining who may benefit and how they may benefit from your studies findings, and recommendations. Let's now take a look at some purpose statement examples after the individual elements are placed in paragraph format. Please take a moment to review the qualitative case study purpose statement example. Notice a lettered subscript is provided where the corresponding rubric requirement is presented. Also notice, variables are not included in this example because qualitative studies do not incorporate variables. You will want to ensure your purpose statement follows this roadmap as it maps directly to the rubric. Also, notice how this statement does not exceed 250 words and also includes the five required elements. Please take a moment to review the qualitative phenomenological purpose statement example. Again, Note a lettered subscript is provided where the corresponding rubric element is presented. Again, notice variables are not included in this example because qualitative studies do not incorporate variables. Also notice that this example does not exceed 250 words and it also contains the five required elements. You will want to ensure your problem statement follows this roadmap as it maps directly to the rubric. Please take a moment to review the quantitative correlation purpose statement example. Again, note a lettered subscript is provided where the corresponding required rubric element is presented. However, notice in this example, Variables are included because quantitative studies must incorporate independent and dependent variables. Also, it is vitally important that correlation designs examine more than one independent or predictive variable. Simple bivariate correlations are not appropriate for doctoral level studies. In this example, you will see there are two independent variables which are leadership style and size of business. You will want to ensure your purpose statement follows this roadmap, again, as it maps directly to the rubric. The following checklist can be used to aid you in meeting the rubric requirements. However, this checklist maps directly to the rubric. Again, the required elements are the method, the design, variables, if it's a quantitative or mixed method study, the population, the geographical location, and the social change statement. And again, it should be no more than 250 words. In this tutorial, I have discussed the intent of the purpose statement and provided a detailed discussion on the required elements of a well-written purpose statement. The elements addressed were the methodology, the design, 
the variables, again, for quantitative and mixed method studies only, the population, the geographical location, and the social change implications. Examples of quantitative and qualitative purpose statements were prevented and a helpful checklist was provided. The DBA methodology team would like to thank you for taking the time to review this purpose statement tutorial and we wish you much success in completing your doctoral study. We look forward to seeing you graduate.